So my legs are giving out here at the um, Canadian International Automobile Show. But just in the nick of time, along came this beauty with a crepe, crepe crew seder to pick me up, of course. Although not Batman, because Batman drove a Ford, not a Firebird. And so here I am at the Arden Automobile section, and we're about to go inside. <laughs> this year's Arden Automobile section at the Canadian International Art Show is jewels. And when I say jewels, I mean these beautiful hood ornaments that you see on different uh, vehicles. And so in this case, that's the 1956 Cadillac Goddess. And she's a beauty with all sorts of lovely curves. I'm here with Rob McLeese, uh, the founder of the Concord or the Cobble Beach Concord Automobile Show, which uh, is the reason why the Canadian International Automobile Show has all these wonderful uh, old vehicles every single year in the um, in the Arden Automobile section. And you started this section of the of the. We started it four years ago. And we've had a lot of fun with it. The first year we did the evolution of the automobile. The second year we did it in conjunction with the advertising and how the ads had evolved with the cars. And the third year we did 150 years of Canada and we did the first 100 years of Canada with the Historica Canada helping us with all the banners and the stories of Canada. It was really cool. Oh, wonderful. And then this year we decided to do jewelry, automotive jewelry, which consists of the hood ornaments and the badges and the marks of the various uh, auto manufacturers. This particular car over my right shoulder is a 1958 Firebird concept car. There's only one car made of this. Uh, it comes from the GM Heritage Center in Michigan and it is great fun as you can see probably partially an inspiration for the Batmobile. Yeah. So so th this car came uh, came before this predates the This came the before. So 1958 Batmobile was around 62, 63. Okay. My name is Bob Beckett. I'm from Mount Forest, Ontario, Canada. And this is my 1932 Chrysler Imperial convertible sedan. She's a thing of beauty. It's, um, they made 36 of these automobiles. This is body number one. Um, it's reportedly owned by Clark Gable. Um, oh, wow. Bought from the New York um, Auto Show in 1932. It's been most of its life in California. And I bought it about uh, six, seven years ago. And it took about five years to restore. Done a beautiful job. Well, thank you very much. The uh, the exhibit is called Jewels Art in the Automobile. We try to um, emphasize the beautiful um, ornamentation of the ornaments of these classic cars. Each one is specific to their brand and their model. Uh, this one particularly is what they call a gazelle, uh, which is a um, kind of like an antelope um, from Africa and Asia, and these wings. Chrysler's hallmark and then when they made this Imperial to kind of compete with the larger cars like Duesenberg and Packard and Lincoln and Cadillac he wanted to dress this wing ornament up so we put this charging gazelle and it's from 1931 to 1933 only and she's a stunning photo ornament. It's gorgeous. So what got you into uh, restoring older cars? Well, my father um, had a couple older cars from the 40s when I was a kid, and uh, I would always ride around with him to shows and tours, and there was a fellow in our club that had a car just like this. It was a, it was a Phaeton as opposed to a four-door convertible sedan, but it was a 31 Chrysler, and I rode in that car many, many, many miles, and I enjoyed it, and I always wanted one. So it took me about 20 years to kind of... Um, uh, get to the point where I could afford one and uh, acquire one and find one. So I did, and then over a five year period I restored it to this condition. And I chose the silver pewter uh, body with the black fenders to accent the pinstripe because um, I wanted something that looked elegant and I feel we succeeded. Very nice. It is elegant, it's just gorgeous. Um, and I'm curious, uh, has your daughter taken an interest in, in working with you on restoring the cars? Abs absolutely. She'd be here with me right now, but she's just up at the mall. But um, uh, yeah, she comes to a lot of events with me, um, almost all of them, when she can. She's in grade 12, so she's 17 years old. 
and uh, she'll be in the automotive business at some at some capacity, some uh, at some point in, in the near future. I suspect probably after she's done university. Uh, but she loves the car. She knows as much about this car as I do. And if I wasn't here, she could stand in and tell you the same thing that I'm telling you. So I'm very proud of her to kind of enjoy the hobby with me. We've had some great times. Yeah, it's lovely to be able to share that. Thank you. You're great. The gentleman who owns this car, this is a 1925 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. Uh, the gentleman lives in Port Elgin. He drives this car to Florida, not trailers it and then drives it down there. He drives it to Florida. That's all kinds of awesome. And he's got, he's got a whole bunch of Rolls-Royces and he just loves his old cars and he's great at maintaining them. And his son is into the into maintaining the older cars as well. And his grandson is now into it. So it's really oh, fun Oh, very to see. cool. What a great hobby to share as Isn't a family. It? it really is. And see how the crank, the starter, is tied to the... Oh, uh, I didn't see that yeah, earlier. It's so that it doesn't swim, flip around. Huh. You see the special lenses on the uh, lights? Oh, yeah. Kind of purpley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it does it... throw the light better. Okay. Is it a slightly purple hue? Yeah, yeah. Nice. But it really, it's such a classic line on this car. Don't forget the trunk. You gotta have your tickle trunk on the back. I know, I love that about these cars. Isn't that fun? And well, and one of the things that I found interesting today, I'd never realized that there was another, you know, sort the of- rumble seat. Yeah. And I saw that on one of the other vehicles inside too. Uh, yeah, the Pierce Arrow. No, it's great fun. It's just, it's really fun. And you can see somebody really takes good care of these. Oh, absolutely. And then the, you treat them well, they'll treat you well. They'll drive for a long time. They're really solidly built. And how do you like the windscreen? On I know, the the I know, I was thinking that. <laughs> that gave me a good chuckle when I noticed it earlier. Yeah. Well, and how many times have you been in a convertible sitting in the back seat and it's like you're, mm -hmm. you're just getting blown up? Well, these guys were smart. That's 1925. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very smart. So, and that hood ornament is known as the spirit of ecstasy. Oh. Yes. And it actually was fashioned after a lady who was the mistress of a fellow who had one of these cars. And then unfortunately, she... Uh, she had a problem when she was killed on the ship that she was on in the first war was torpedoed. Oh no. Yeah. And so her spirit has lived on in the form of that hood ornament. It's a good way to be remembered. Yeah. It's a rather beautiful and elegant way to be remembered. And now, out of curiosity, why the nickname the Spirit of Ec Ecstasy? I'll let your imagination. It's <laughs> probably a very wise answer. <laughs> This car is great fun because it's the brother to the car that won the great race in 1908. And it's a 1907 Thomas Flyer. Look at the hood ornament on this, the Eagle. That's the big American Eagle. And that car is a 60 horsepower car, four cylinder. 1907 it was produced. So you look at how elaborate it is with the gasoline lights or not gasoline, it's a uh, kerosene light. And they've got the different pumps and the, and the horn. Look at the size of the, of the horn. Somebody's in your way. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's it's like it could, you know, belongs in an orchestra. It does, it does. And it's the, the great race. And you've seen the movie with uh, Natalie Woods and uh, Tony Curtis and those guys, the race, the movie that was in the 60s. They used, they were recreating the great race. This great race is starting again on June 23rd from Buffalo and it's doing the eastern part of the seaboard. It'll finish in Halifax eight days later. Oh, very cool. Oh, that's going to be a, that's going to be a hoot. Is it taking this, is this taking? It's this year. It's this year because it's the 110th anniversary of the great race. Who? Oh, there's Terry. That's the fastest I've ever moved. This is Terry's car. Good work. Oh, it's a beautiful car. Now, Erica is here trying to get a, a spirit and uh, Terry's the one oh, who's I'm responsible for this car. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay because the gentleman who wanted to talk to you is sitting over there okay. talking to Tony Lane. Tony and Elaine Lane. Okay. 
who own the beautiful Red Packard right mm. behind it. So Eric is from Vancouver, but also Toronto, and she's doing um, stories in different aspects. So I'm just walking around and okay. bringing a little bit of background and explaining this car is going to lead off the great race this year. Yes. Which is yes. pretty exciting. Yes. Yeah, that's going to be a hoot. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, we uh, had a, they did a lunch stop at our museum uh, last year, and we were on day seven. So when they came to um, came to the museum, we did have this car. Also, we have two cars from the Great Race movie. Okay. And Leslie. Do you? So we, yeah, we have actually got two sets of each. And what museum are you from? Uh, Stahl's Automotive, uh, Stahl's Automotive Foundation in Chesterfield. Michigan. Okay. And we had uh, this one out there, and we had both the um, the Hannibal and the Leslie out there. And I know I'm going to get his name wrong, Jeff. Mio or something like that. He is the grandson of. Oh, the guy who talks about yes. the great race. Yes. yes. He is the grand or great grandson, I believe, of George Schuster, who was the driver of the original. He Not technically Monica. was the mechanic. Yes. But he actually drove the car to the finish line. Now, now, how do you decide who gets to be the driver behind the wheel? <laughs> I'm guessing that there's been some 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 debate well, over here. There's only two of us okay. at the museum mm -hmm. um, who currently are allowed to be driving the vehicle. Okay. So it's not uh, for the most part. Chris normally he's my um, collections technician. He'll normally try to jump in, and but he'll know if it's a car I really want to drive. It's like no, <laughs> I'll drive. You you guide. I'll drive. You navigate. So but we take turns. Yeah. We make it work. <laughs> well, at least you get both get to be there. In the yes. Yeah. And it almost looks like you like the seats. I was just just looking at them as you were as you were talking, and they almost look like you know, um, like a sofa. It is it's like Chesterfield. Yeah. They're yeah. very comfortable. Yeah. That's why they're your museum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are very comfortable. And it is an original 1907. This is not the one from the race, no, but it I is. I said it's a brother. Yes. It's in definitely in the same bloodline of the car. It's an original 1907, and just when it was restored, they restored it to look like the race car with the, the American flag on it, and so. And in the same, the it's that col color is actually called French gray. And so, when you when you take on the race, uh, how many how many miles are you going to have to drive each day? We're only going just for the opening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're um, we're. We worked so hard last year to put on the lunch stop for the race that we're mm -hmm. happy that we get to go and just enjoy and have fun on the opening. We're basically going to take off in the beginning and we'll have um, George Schuster's great grandson with us. Oh, very and cool. we'll take off just as the lead car goes and then we'll probably make a left when they go right or mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but we're not gonna go far with it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very cool, it's It'll beautiful. Be Sorry, you were telling me about okay. Albert Gonis? So this car is really fun because the 1931 Pierce Arrow, if you look at the sculpt at the archer, the fellow who was the model for that sculpture, for that uh, headpiece or that hood ornament, was a gentleman by the name of Albert Gonis. Turned out he worked for General Motors, one of the special de design divisions, and he was he was so engaged at trying to get the right posture. They did the first one with him in the in the mid 20s with his clothes on. Then he decided I've got to get more and look like a real archer. So what he did is they stripped him down, and he actually practiced with a broom broomstick to try and simulate a bow and arrow and huh. doing the bow. And so it's pretty cool because you look at the physique, and it's so funny that he's General Motors, and yet it was on a Pier, Pierce Arrow. Huh. Interesting. I used a broom and a yardstick. And you were telling me with, um, with the, oh, what do you call it? Yeah, oh, the, the rumble oh, seat. Yeah. yeah, I can't this, remember what they're called. This is a rumble seat, and on the back is the spare tire. But most of the cars at that time, the spare tire was mounted up on the front fender because normally if they had any kind of a trunk, they wanted to leave it open so that they could get at it easily. But so it's rare to have the spare tire on the back of the, of the Pierce Arrow. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had the opportunity to ride around in one of those in the back? I have, well, I've sat in the back. I have not driven and been driven in the back. Okay. But Catherine is our event manager. Yeah, yeah. I imagine it would just be so much fun. Is it comfortable it back there? Yeah. Oh, the seats have so much padding. Yeah. Yeah, they're really comfortable. And you see the little steps to get up there? 
Oh, wow. See the chrome steps? Oh, yeah. It's pretty neat. Oh, that is very cool. And this oh. is a perfect example of that car. You can see how the, uh, they've got the arrow lined up perfectly on the Pierce arrow. That's a V12 car, which is a very rare. As you know, most of us these days have V6s and, and V8s. Yeah. That's a V12. So it was a very powerful car. And that was built in 1933. That was a, that's a 1931, but it's uh, just beautiful. Anyway, we're just lucky to be able to borrow these cars for the purposes of putting the show together because to me it's such art. It is. It's art and it's also history. Yeah. And the stories behind each one of these cars is very interesting because you think about it, even your own family sedan. Think of the trips you did with your family and it brings back all these memories. And it's, yeah. uh, it was, it's a very interesting 356. As you can see, it's a very pretty car. Uh, it predated the 356 A, B and C models. And it's just, it's just an elegant car. It's, this was part of the early days. So 356 evolved into the A, B and C series, which were produced into the early 60s. But this car being a 1954, you would have trouble discerning this car from a 58 or 59. They have classic designs. It's like the 911 that yeah. goes on for a 10 year period. Now and I'm I'm curious. So with um, when at the Concourse it, Elegance, it's, it's Concorde Elegance. Yeah. Concorde Elegance. I wanted to make sure I had it right. Okay. Um, do you get people dressing up all sorts of like yeah, wonderfully do. to match the vehicles? Yeah, we do. We get period people who dress in period costume. People who will just come with the big hats and the and the nice clothes. And we encourage that because mm -hmm. it's almost we want it to be a festive atmosphere. And we want people that have some fun and. You're putting on the Ritz with some pretty cool cars. Yeah, That's yeah. What, and people get all excited about it. And so I'm curious, what did uh, what did the um, what did the people who came driving this car uh, end up wearing? Well, you know what? In this particular car, they would be dressed in a '50s, early '50s, early to late '50s outfit, and it'd be pretty. It's not as not as discerning as the outfits that would come from the '30s. So, you know, we're starting to get into what a lot of us baby boomers would have seen. And you know, they might have the bell-bottom pants. Yeah, so. Oh, that's 1971 fun. Ferrari 365 GTB4 Daytona. And it was a condo find. It had been parked in a Toronto garage for 25 years. Wow. From 1989 till 2014. And the gentleman who bought it, he bought it in 1971. He saw the car at the Geneva Auto Show went directly to uh, uh, the factory at Ferrari in Modena. He ordered the car, had it delivered a few months later. He picked it up in Europe, drove around Europe, put it on the Queen Mary, had it brought over to North America. Then he drove it, raced it at Lime Rock uh, in the US. And then he, in 1989, his father got sick and died in Asia. He had to go home. So he parked the car, put it on blocks in his condo garage, thinking he'd be back in six months, six to 12 months. It took him six and a half years to clear his father's estate. Came back mid-90s, he had all kinds of business he had to get done, so the car stayed on blocks until 2014. Wow. When they found it, they took the cover, I said, I gotta do something with this. And he sent it to auction. The fellow who bought it at auction had done all the maintenance on the car oh, for the wow. 30 years. For oh. the 20 years that it was operating. Yeah. And so it's pretty neat that this this car is still here. So it's been in Ontario since 1971, early 72. That must be magical for him, like to. Uh, it is. Kind it of, is. you know. And it, you know what? It's that stuff. It's those kind of stories that get you all excited. This particular car up here is a Delahaye that came. It was. It's a special car. There were only four made with that specific body type, a Toucher body type. But for years, everybody thought it was an Henri Chaperon body. So they found out, they phoned Henri Chaperon's daughter, who has all of, of Henri Chaperon's records, and they figured out that it was not an, a Chaperon body Delahaye, but it's actually a Toucher body Delahaye, which is an even rarer, a very obscure coach builder. So this car, owned by the Classic Car Club of America, has been fully restored back to original colors. And you'll notice the green piping fits into the same green piping that's on the Delahaye insignia on the front. Oh, very engine. cool. It really is beautiful, the, the, the 
you know, the, just the whole color scheme and everything of it. Well, it's so unusual. It's gorgeous. Look at, even the interior matches the pinstripe. Oh, yeah. So, it almost makes me wonder, because, you know, you're starting to see uh, certain vehicle companies uh, doing some, some of that. Some yeah, of yes. so that's that's all, that's not new thinking. That's that's them returning no, exactly. to... Exactly, returning to their roots. Yeah. But you can tell it's a French car when you look at the bulbs with the yellow light behind. Oh, yeah. And 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 so 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 it, that's that's sort of a a signature that's to a French European, car. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The Europeans. And you were going to tell me something about the Cadillac. Oh yeah, that Cadillac. Well, that's a '53 Cadillac. But if you look at the hood ornament, the '53 ornament. That's the lady. That's the goddess. And what you've got here is the '56 up top behind it. And you can see the evolution, how her hair is flowing, and more and more. I mean, it's really neat to watch how automotive design has evolved. And in this particular, that particular thing shows you four scenes from Cobble Beach from the Concours. And down in the bottom left is a 1971 Miura SV Lamborghini, which is a very rare car. And it's owned by a Toronto collector. I should move that bag out of the way, but... <laughs> And up in the top right in the middle was our best in show last year, which is a 1946 Pina Farina bodied Alfa Romeo. Oh, beautiful. You guys must have such, that, that we'll weekend must be an absolute hoot. It is spectacular. It's so much fun. You see, we have all this waterfront, so we host the, the uh, concours on the 18th hole. Nice. And all the cars load in between 5.30 in the morning and 8 o'clock in the morning. We have about 110, 115 cars, and we have 45 judges that come from all over the U.S. and Canada. Half of our judging team is from Pebble Beach. How oh, fun. Yeah. No, it's really, you know what, we're so lucky. Pebble Beach is the top concours in North America by a big measure. And our, we're, um, we're the new boys on the block. We're just coming into year six on September 16th. But it, from right downtown, it takes two and a half hours to get there. Yeah. So it's not too bad, and it's a nice drive. If you like cars and you like driving, it's not a big mm -hmm. thing. 